it's Tori and welcome to another video. I am, as the title says, doing a 24 hour readathon, which I'm super excited about. I have two days in a row off of work, which hasn't happened in a minute. So I am really excited to be able to do this. I have found that it's easier for me to start like in the early afternoon and then go to the early afternoon the next day, just because then I feel like I can get a really solid start. I'm not exhausted when I start. For example, if I start at midnight, I'm like basically planning to go to sleep in 30 minutes. <laughs> so this will just enable me to have a really good start and a really good end, which is what I most hope for whenever I do a 24 hour readathon. So I'm starting at one o'clock. It is 1254 right now. So I have a few more minutes and then I'll get started. But I wanted to show you what I'm reading for this readathon. So I have two main books that I'm going to be focusing on, and then I have two other books that I'll read a little bit of, most likely, but the way I'm reading them, I'm not necessarily planning to finish them in this readathon. If that makes sense, it will in a second once I explain it better. But first, the books I'm primarily focusing on. First, I want to finish The Birth of Venus by Sarah Dunant. I am almost done. I think I have just over 100 pages left of this. So very, very close. Should finish it within the first few hours. And I'm really liking it. It takes place in the Italian Renaissance just after the death of Lorenzo de Medici. And as the French come in and Florence starts to be taken over by very, what's the word, very intense, intensely religious people that have a very specific idea of God and his strictness and things like that, if that makes any sense. Anyway, it's really, really good so far. I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, there are some things I don't love about it. For example, there was a scene I just read that was a bit of, had a bit of a consent issue where the guy was asleep and the girl started to get on him. Yeah, I don't really like that, but for the majority of it, it's been pretty good. Then, once I finish that, my goal is to read and hopefully finish The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, sorry about that glow, by Suzanne Collins. This is the prequel to the Hunger Games series that just recently come, came out, as many of you know. And it is what I'm reading for my science or no, oh, what was it? I think it was science fiction, possibly dystopian challenge for Bookopoly. I'll have to go back and look, but I had to read this for one of my challenges for Bookopoly. Actually, The Birth of Venus I needed to as well. I think it was for a romance heavy book, but anyway, so this is the next book I'll pick up and hopefully I can finish it within the 24 hours. I think I might be able to, and I possibly can start another one, but I'm not gonna plan anything right now. I'm just going to focus on these two. Then I will most likely end up reading about 60 pages-ish by the end of this of The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. I've been reading just a few pages of this every day for throughout the month for my Owl's Charm exam. It's the last one I have for my Owl's, so very close to being done. I am right there. So I have less than 100 pages, very close, but I tabbed it so I could see how far I wanted to get each day. So I have three more days. So I'll probably read a little bit of it today, a little bit of it tomorrow morning towards the end of the readathon, and then I'll finish it on Friday. But yes, so that's that. And then I'm also listening to an audiobook, and I'm actually really loving this audiobook. So I probably will try to find a chance to listen to at least a little bit of it throughout the next couple of days. But that is The Count of Monte Cristo. Again, sorry about the glare shiny cover um, by Alexandre Dumas. I am so excited about this and I'm already loving it. Already love Edmond Dantes. I'm literally in chapter two, but I just already am loving him and find, I'm just really excited to see his arc because I know a little bit about it and it's just fabulous. Again, I'm so sorry. It's so shiny. Anyway, but I'm so excited about this. So I'll probably at least listen to a little bit Probably not much though, because I usually just listen to it when I'm driving in the car and I'm not planning to do that. So we'll see. Although my brother is graduating today, so I'm going to see him walk in a couple of hours. And then we have in my area, some of the restaurants are opening a little bit to limited capacity. And my uncle actually owns, an, owns a restaurant. Don't worry, he's doing fine. It's still open. But because it's more open and everything we are going to go there for my brother's graduation dinner just to celebrate with him with my family and it should be really good so luckily i'm in an area where we've been in lockdown and everything but things are starting to open up where one of the 
areas in the US where we're being hit the least by coronavirus as of right now. So we're kind of slowly opening a few things up to limited capacity. So anyway, yes, yeah, so that's the plan. I'll probably film some of that, but I am gonna get started because I have one minute left and I'll check in once I finish my portion of the luminaries because I think that's what I'm gonna start with. For the day. Hi friends! So I officially finished the portion of the luminaries that I needed to read for today. It was about 30 pages so it didn't take a terribly long time, but man this is such a good book. <laughs> it's definitely I would say one of my favorites of the year so far. Already I can say that. I mean I only have like 30 pages actually 50 pages left I think that I'll read over the next couple of days so it, anyway it's fabulous it's a wonderful historical mystery that was very well cra crafted it's definitely definitely slower so some people would probably struggle with it um, and I could see why but I really enjoyed it and I actually really liked reading just a portion at a time because it was almost like watching a TV series where I'm like watching an episode at a time so it just kind of had a nice feeling to it and actually I recently found out that the BBC has made a mini series of this that should be coming out sometime this year unsure when but I think it will make a really good mini series. Eleanor Catton the um, author is involved in making it was involved in making it however she herself said that she changed a little bit from the book which makes sense because based on the format of the book I think it would be really hard to make a TV series that's based on that um so it's understandable that they would change it a little bit but anyway I'm so excited to finish this because it's just so good I'm just loving it I love it so much. Anyway, I'm going to start reading The Birth of Venus and hopefully finish it in the next couple hours. It's currently almost two, a little before two, so at three we're going to see my brother walk for graduation. Well, technically 3.20, but we're gonna be ready by three. So I only have like an hour to read this for now and then after that I'll continue to read. Also, sorry about this makeupless look. I just figured I needed to give my face a little break from oily stuff because I at work am required to wear a mask, understandable, but it does has been causing me to break out a little bit so I was like today since I'm not working I'm just not going to do makeup and just let my face chill a little bit because it's been put under a lot of pressure with the masks on top of makeup recently plus seasons changing always is a struggle on my skin so anyway. That's that, sorry about that, but yes, that is the status right now and I will check in in a little bit. Probably the next clip will be something to do with my brother walking. I probably won't update before that, but then yes, I'll update you later after that. Okay, you can't see this super well, but I decided to read outside on our back porch and you might be able to see some floating dots around in the air and it's literally like snowing cotton. Allergy season has officially arrived. Luckily I took some medication already so I should be okay but it's yeah you can't really see it at all. If you could it's just it's insane. I wish I could see show you better but anyway it's fine. <laughs> to 40 minute drive to get to my uncle's restaurant so during the drive I was able to read and then once we got back I was able to finish The Birth of Venus and I'm not sure what I'm going to rate it yet. Somewhere between a three or four and four stars. I'm thinking more maybe four but there's a part of me that for a portion of this was thinking a three stars 
so I just have to consider for a minute but it ended up being really good like I mentioned earlier there was an issue with consent at one point there was a particularly graphic sex scene which is not my favorite and I ended up just skipping it so it was fine but that does in a lot of ways hinder my enjoyment of books um but at the same time I don't want to like solely judge this book based on that. That was more towards the first half of the book so I was able to kind of forget about it by the end. But if you are sensitive to graphic sex scenes then just know that this does have that in there if you're not into that like me. Um, but it was a really really interesting look at the history and it was my first experience learning about a lot of the history involved in this with the Italian Renaissance, this time period right after Lorenzo de' Medici died, Lorenzo the Great died. There was a lot of political and religious upheaval during that point in history and so I didn't know a lot about it. So it was really cool to get this introduction and it made me interested in learning a bit more about the politics during this time. I'm finding, because I know there's like something about the Italian Renaissance that I've really found fascinating and a lot of that is the art um but I think I think I'm not necessarily super into like how art is made or anything like that like I can admire art but I don't necessarily have the care for the technicalities of it however the political and social insinuations that are made as art begins to change at this time and how like as art changes you're seeing how society is changing and I think that's very interesting so that show is shown a lot in this book yeah it was really really good I think I'll definitely definitely read more by this author in the future I know she has a duology about the Borgias that I'm interested in and I actually think my mom has another book by her called Sacred Hearts that I'm not sure what it's about but after this, I'm willing to read more by this author. So now I'm going to pick up The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I think I'm going to take a few minute break just to like use the restroom and stuff and then I'll pick this up. I have read the first couple paragraphs already just to get myself into the writing style and I'm excited to read it. The Birth of Venus ended up taking a little longer than I was thinking it would. So hopefully I'll be able to get through this by tomorrow afternoon but we'll see we'll see i'll do my best hi guys quick update it is almost 11 o'clock i am 125 pages into this by now and i'm actually really liking it i've heard a lot of mixed things about it and i could see how some people would think it's boring granted i'm like barely like a fourth ish of the way through so really like i don't know how it's gonna end up but so far I'm really liking it I'm liking um, getting to know the games from a different time period um, an earlier time period and seeing how a lot of the things that come into play in the Hunger Games series were kind of started I really like the District 12 tribute a lot I think she is fascinating and I'm always a fan of characters who are really good at playing psychological games who aren't bad guys <laughs> I like bad guys who are good at it too, but I really like it when there's like a protagonist who's good, who's able to play those games, so really enjoying that. As for President Snow, he's fine. I'm not like overly attached to him, but um, I'm glad he at least has some attributes that he has later on that make him so evil to start off with like he's not evil yet but he definitely has some traits that you can see follow him into his adult into his adulthood and make him the person he ends up being as they further develop so it's pretty interesting so far i'm gonna take a little break maybe watch a youtube video really quick and then get back into it and we'll see how late i can stay up i usually can only make it to like two o'clock but maybe i'll be able to stay up longer i don't know we're just gonna go until i just can't any longer basically all right i am halfway through the ballad of songbirds and snakes sorry about the shaking of the camera if there's any and the bad lighting. I'm starting to get to a point where there's a few things I'm not liking as much, um, but I'm 
it's not so bad that I'm like despising it. Oh, sorry. Maybe I can straighten my camera. It's not so bad that I'm despising it. So I'm willing to continue, but it's starting to go in a direction that I'm like, mm, I don't know how I feel about it. There's still a lot I like about it. So it's not a complete failure to me for sure. I definitely won't give it more less than three stars unless something horrible happens. So Anyway, I'm going to get to bed now though because I'm pretty tired and then tomorrow morning I will let you know. I think I'm, uh, we'll see how I feel. I think I might just go straight into, back into Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes instead of reading the luminaries like I originally planned to start off. But I'll probably read the luminaries later. But yeah, I'll check in with you tomorrow. Hi guys, so I just woke up about an hour ago. It's currently 9 o'clock and I have made it my goal to finish... The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I'm halfway through after last night, a little over halfway, I guess, technically. Anyway, I'm going to finish this, even if it takes me beyond my 24 hour marks, marks, mark, I'm going to finish it. And then I'm going to read my portion of the luminaries and then I'll finish out this vlog. So you'll see me complete this book, hear all my non-spoiler thoughts by the end. And yeah, so we're just gonna get started on this. We'll see how the, second half goes. The first half I liked and then it kind of started to lose me. So we're gonna see how the second half goes and see what my final thoughts are. Also I just love this on the hardcover. It's just so nice. Anyway, I guess I'll try to shoot for the 350 page mark and that's when I'll check in with you but yes. I will see you then. Hi guys, so I have reached the 350 page mark, so I have about 150 pages left. I'm definitely not going to finish this in the 24 hours, but like I said earlier, I'm just gonna keep this vlog going until I finish this. <sighs> there are just some things, it's just kind of boring right now, I guess. Like I really liked the first like 175-ish pages, maybe 200 pages, but there's just, we've just reached a point where it's very boring and I feel like there's been some scenes added that I'm like, were those really necessary and maybe it will become clearer why they were necessary as time goes on but for now I'm just like I just feel like she's just trying to add action into this book because I mean with the Hunger Games we're used to more action but this is obviously a lot less because he's not actually in the Hunger Games. I remember Murphy um, on her channel Murphy Napier talking about how this book was longer than it needed to be and I'm really starting to see that already. And I still have 150 pages left, but I'm already like, I feel like this could have been cut down a lot. So anyway, that's just a little complaint, but I am enjoying it overall. I'm not hating it, I guess I should say. I still really like Lucy a lot, the girl from District 12. She's so great, so great. And I'll explain more why I like her later. But yeah, so that's the update right now. Kind of being bored, but I'm still curious to see how it goes. I think part of it too is I hoped that Snow would have more ambition than he does. Like I feel like he's a character that I could see having a good moral code when he's younger, whatever, but I feel like ambition should be something that really fuels him, and while, in fact, I think that's one of the taglines on the cover, the dust jacket of this, but anyway, I mean, I see some ambition, but it more is for the sake of, like, he needs money to survive, like, his family's really poor, and so he's just trying to survive, so it's less, like, real ambition just for the sake of power, and more ambition just because he wants to save his family, and while that's good, it's a good thing, um, for a villain backstory, I would hope that he would have more ambition for the sake of gaining power than he does. So hopefully that will change in the next 150 or so pages. I'll probably check in again. Maybe I'll do like 75 pages. We'll cut it in half. Update and then I'll finish the rest of the book after that but anyway we'll see so that's the update for now let's see how i feel about the next 75 pages in the next clip okay so i only have about 70 pages left and at this point i'm having i'm feeling a little bit more hopeful again it's still pretty boring but we just hit a point where i think things are really going to take off i only have technically a couple more chapters even though I have like 70 pages, it's just long chapters, but still I have a feeling that a lot is about to go down, which is exciting. I am starting to realize, cause for a long time I was really struggling to understand Coriolanus's 
um, or Snow's, I guess, loyalties and what he wanted. Like, he kind of kept going back and forth with things and I was really struggling to get a handle on his personality and ideas. And I think part of that I'm starting to realize is he didn't really know where his loyalties lay. Like he was strong, firm with the capital and wanted to stick with the capital, but at the same time he didn't completely agree with a lot of what's going on in the capital and a lot of the things the capital's doing. So he's kind of been really wishy-washy about what he actually wants. And I think he's starting to make his choice, which if you know anything about the Hunger Games, you probably know what that choice is. It's pretty obvious, but I'm still very interested to see how it ends up. Hi, Finn. Finn's coming. He's been so excited to be in another video. Do you want to say hi? He ruined my life. Oh, you don't even know them. So anyway, yeah, I am going to finish this now. It is almost two so i'm definitely over my 24 hours but but that's totally fine i think i should be able to finish this in the next hour hour and a half probably and then i'll share my final thoughts hi guys so i finished the ballad of songbirds and snakes and i actually filmed this earlier but i didn't like the way i articulated myself very well so we're gonna try it again and then i'm going to wrap up the entire 24 hour readathon. Thoughts on this overall? I think I'm going to give it three stars. And mostly that's because this could have been like half the size it is. <laughs> it could have been so much shorter. There was a lot of boring portions. I also did not like the romance very much. I thought it was pretty unnecessary and honestly would have served better if they were friends. I don't know. I feel like there could have been some changes to the plot to make it a lot more interesting because like I said, the plot overall was fairly uninteresting. However, the insight into Snow's personality was really interesting for me. Obviously in the books, we are only seeing it from Katniss's perspective. So we don't get very much understanding of Snow and why he's doing what he's doing and what drives him. And in this, while it was a little scattered and the pacing kind of made it weird and it was a little difficult to pin Snow down and understand his personality, by the end I began to understand that what drives him in his personality is a combination of three traits or aspects. He first of all is cowardly in a lot of ways. He's afraid to go against the might of the capital. But he also feels a fierce loyalty to the capital and struggles with the idea of the inhumanity he's seen as he went through the war and has experienced a lot of the aftermath from the war that the district started. And so he really doesn't trust humanity as a whole and feels that the capital is what the capital is doing is the only way to really keep people from becoming like animals. And so he's very fiercely loyal to the capital and the rules, but he's also very ambitious. And I almost wish the ambition had been showcased more in this book. That was another thing I didn't like about it was, I feel like even on the back it says, ambition will fuel him, competition will drive him, but power has its price. And I feel like his ambition wasn't very clear. Like his ambition seemed based solely on the fact that he wanted to protect his family name as well as keep them alive because they were very poor and starving and had lost a lot of their reputation and so it only it almost seemed like he was just trying to protect his family and that's what fueled his ambition but I feel like once we see Snow in the future it's all about himself and his own personal ambition rather than ambition for anyone around him and so I felt that was kind of strange I really didn't like the ending <laughs> because I feel like it could have been fine, but the way it was paced was very rushed. And I felt like Snow all of a sudden went from this guy who had decent morals and was trying to be good. And all of a sudden was just like, no, I'm with the capital. And it was just very fast and strange. And whereas it made sense as I like thought more about those attributes that I named, it still was a little strange for me. The pacing was just weird. Sorry if the wind is super loud. So anyway, yeah, give it three out of five stars. I'm glad I read it and I think it adds a lot to Snow's character as opposed to some people I know don't agree with that. But for me, it did just understanding a little bit more into the traits that make him who he is later. Even though this 
particular plot was kind of weird, just his personality. He's just a very complex individual and I liked getting to know him better. And I liked the world building in it a lot. It really filled out the world seeing the games like 60 years before Katniss came in, how they were back then, how different they were in this before they started making it such a big show just when they were just starting to make it a big show it was very interesting and i really liked lucy gray the district 12 girl a lot she was fascinating they didn't make her at all like katniss which i appreciated i really really liked her i did not like i said earlier i did not like the relationship i felt like it was very random and i don't know it was kind of cheesy to me but there were i still liked her as a person and liked getting to know snow so those are my thoughts um i also actually ended up finishing it wasn't really i wasn't really going to talk about this but i did end up finishing it today and that's the luminaries by eleanor catton i just had a little bit left sorry that's really shiny on the camera but i only had a little bit left this was a such a fun historical mystery i won't go too deep into thoughts on this just because this one i need a little more time to ponder on my thoughts on but there were a lot of characters I loved in here I loved the way it was written Eleanor Catton is an amazing writer it definitely had a feel like a Victorian classic that same writing style and it was really good and the mystery itself was crazy so this is what I read during this 24-hour readathon well the books I finished I didn't end up listening to any of the Count of Monte Cristo which was fine but yeah let me know down below some of the books you've read recently, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!